Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about how I ombre or bleached my naturally dark hair. So I know that there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube, but I just really thought it'd be nice to share my experiences because I did a lot of research and I also had to fix some mistakes along the way too. So I thought I would just go ahead and share that with you. So let's get right into it and talk about the products that I had used and what you'll need to prepare and also what type of look you're going for. So I did tons and tons of research as far as looking up photos of ideally what I wanted my hair to look like. And honestly, it didn't come out exactly how I wanted it because everybody's hair is different, everyone's skin color is different. So what you choose or what you think may look good on someone else may not actually reflect what it looks on you. So just be open-minded when you're doing this process. That being said, I wanted to get it really, really light. I wanted almost a very pale, pale blonde, maybe not so much platinum. I did get some very light blondes underneath because that is what I bleached the longest. It was underneath uh, and I also wanted to determine if I was trying to go for a dip dye look or trying to have more of a ombre effect where it kind of gradually fades into this light blonde color. So I definitely realized that the dip dye isn't what I wanted. I kind of wanted to make it more gradual, even though it probably, you can probably see it better on the underside versus the top, but, um, it's important to have a third color if you want to ombre. So the idea of ombre or bleaching your hair is to get it as light as possible and then depositing that color back into your hair or then toning the bleached effect that you've chosen. Uh, so the bleach I first chose was the Quick Blue. I don't have it because I've used it, but I'll have a photo on the side somewhere. Uh, that is the bleach I chose. It's due to the fact that it has blue agents in it that are kind of a toner to try to get away the brassiness when you're bleaching it. Uh, and then I also switched over to using Prism Lights, which is their blue, their blue one. They also have a violet one. Um, I switched to the, stuck, stuck with the blue bleach products because I was dying or bleaching very dark hair. Now, when I say I switched bleaches, uh, be keep in mind that bleaching your hair, if you have very dark hair like mine, it will take two or more processings of bleach to reach your desired level, depending on how light you wanna go. And it's actually safer to just take a break and bleach your hair at 30 minutes to 45 minutes a time, or even less if your hair is much lighter than mine. So always do a strand test. I highly recommend that to kind of see how long it takes for your hair to lift. So just to forewarn you. And also bleaching is very harsh on your hair. I thought, you know what? My hair is gonna be fine. It's so strong. It takes color so well. I've actually bleached my hair uh, professionally before and um, I had great results and I didn't get much damage but it actually is very damaging to your hair just realize that you are stripping away your hair color and then toning it and putting color back into it processing your hair just makes it a lot weaker so um, I did have much longer hair than this maybe about an inch I did trim uh, and I do feel dryness, so it's very important to have a good conditioner, and I'll talk to you about products I used as well. So I did bleach my hair actually a while ago. I've probably seen it in my last video, but it's been approximately about a month, and since dyeing it and toning it, I haven't done anything to it, so I think that the upkeep with ombre is really easy. You just have to make sure you condition and use a toning shampoo, which I picked up a purple shampoo and that was able to help me make sure the brassiness didn't come back into the blonde that I've already tried to achieve. So during the process, I took photos to kind of capture what was going on and hopefully that'll give you a better idea of just me talking to you about it. Um, the first bleaching I did, again, like I said, I started with Quick Blue. I went to Sally's and bought the packet, and I'll show you a picture of that, and also Developer, which I still have some left here. Um, when you're lightening your hair, the 
higher the volume, so there's 10, 20, 30, and 40. The higher the volume, the lighter, it's a lightening agent, so it is going to make your hair lighter. So when you're bleaching, they generally suggest 30 to 40. 40 is quite high. People generally try to stay away from 40, so I stick with 30 since I knew I was going to bleach multiple times. I'd rather choose a lower developer and do it more times so I know that my hair is healthier. Uh, and just follow the instructions. I believe it's one packet per um, one or two parts of your developer. I'm not quite sure because I don't remember. It's been a while, but I will uh, double check and hopefully put that up in the video. Um, I also got a mixing bowl like this and a hair um, dye tool. Now these come in all shapes and sizes. I went with the just run of the mill. Um, these bristles were kind of stiff, so I wouldn't probably, I would recommend something like a medium because I felt like this was very like stroking my hair and it kind of pulled my hair out so a little bit. So I would probably suggest something a little softer than this, but I liked how wide it was. So um, if you're going to all the way to the roots, you probably want a brush that's a little smaller so it has more precision. If you're just doing a bunch on the bottom and all over, I would recommend a wider brush. I also had um, some foil from Sally's, but good old regular baking foil works just as good. And I actually switched to that later because the foil was larger and was able to cover up most of my hair because it's so long. Um, so the first time I bleached, I started underneath and I sectioned it. It's important to section your hair. I just split my hair in half and I had a section underneath, a section in the middle, and the section on top. And I just clipped it up out of the way. I took the foil, I painted my hair, painted. I put in the bleach mixture in my hair and saturated it. And I made sure to get all the strands because when you get a grouping of hair, if you don't bleach the insides or the strands inside, it's going to look quite odd because the bleach isn't all over the strands of hair. Um, now to the ombre part. If you're looking to ombre, it's important that when you brush it in, I took the time to realize how high I wanted it up. I've seen some ombre just on the bottom. I've seen some all the way up to the midsection here, you know, so I know I knew that I wanted to have three different colors, my natural, kind of a dark medium brown, and then fading it into a lighter blonde. So it's really depending on where you want to start. So I started to comb the bleach vertically um, right around this section is where I started to drag it up a little bit. So that way there isn't just a harsh line like here's my bleach and then boom, that, there's my hair. Like that would, it's not the look I was going for. Now if you're looking, going to look for the edgier, if you're going to try to get the edgier look, then I would suggest just brushing it and then you know, cutting it off. However, if you want it to flow, I actually took some parts all the way up to here, all the way blonde, and then some I just stopped right here and here. So it's kind of just an experimentation and it looks more natural that way if you just kind of go with the flow and you see where you want to paint it, you'll go higher some and lower some and then higher some and lower some, if that makes any sense. Um, and it's also important when you foil or cover your hair with foil because that'll prevent the bleach from drying out. Um, so it'll prolong the process time for the bleach. And if you cut it off, let's say I stroked up to here and I only covered the foil up to here, I made this, this mistake where this part was processing way faster and I had like a demarcation line like right here. It was like bright, it was getting lighter here and then it just started just to have a line and go lighter up there. So make sure that when you cover your hair with foil that you cover everything and go beyond that so that it's processing together at the same temperature, the same time, etc. So that's a key point that I want to make sure you guys know. Okay, so after I did the first bleaching, I'll show you a photo of that. That came out to be more of a brassy, orangey color. Uh, and I knew that I wasn't going to get this bright blonde color right away. Now, if you have light brown hair, ash brown, or anywhere not far away from this color, you may be able to get away with one or two bleachings. But like I said, strand tests so you know 
how your hair is going to react to the bleach and how long you can leave it in because otherwise you'll get breakage which I did get some breakage because I'm bleaching my hair and I've heard horror stories where their people's hair just started slipping right breaking like right here and just slipping right out of their head so that's not good either um, so the first time I probably left it in for 45 minutes to an hour um, I wouldn't recommend an hour per se right at the first shot unless you do the test or you know your hair and how well or how strong it is so I wanted to get as far as I can because I didn't want to over process my hair repeatedly but then again it's like a catch-22 you still have to go multiple times but you want to shorten it you kind of want to shorten it as much as you can without damaging your hair um, so at that time it was orange I was okay with it I used a toning shampoo I wasn't going anywhere for a day or doing anything drastic or going to a wedding or doing something like big and crazy where you have to be out in public often so I knew that I was dyeing my hair and this takes time so the next day I researched and I was like you know what I want to try a new bleach and that is when I switched over to prism lights now if you were to ask me which one to choose I would choose the prism lights because a when I mixed it with a developer it was a lot creamier it kind of fluffed up and foamed up so the texture of the bleach was better it wasn't as dry as the quick blue and it was much more blue like it was extremely blue so I felt like it made my hair less orangey less brassy the second time I bleached it so just my opinion if you're trying to look for a good bleach that's the one I would choose um, so I bleached it the second and third time to try to get it lighter I finally reached the kind of what people say is banana yellow you want to get to a bright yellow stage you want to get it as light as you possibly can and then decide if you want to tone or put color back into it now there's different different methods people say you know use the Wella color charm toner use a ash blonde or ash brown and put that back in your hair and etc cetera, etc cetera. so my method I went with toning and then putting a dye basically getting a color um, and putting that in between to try to fade that in between uh, the natural hair color of my roots and the blonde so I bleached till I maybe reached the third or fourth time uh, and I was happy with the results it was bright yellow it was a lot lighter like some parts were almost I mean white I have some parts here that are almost platinum I mean it's kind of I'm not sure if the lighting is picking it up but I have some lighter white parts in here um, and of course like I said I started with the bottom first so underneath is much lighter than the top so if you have layered hair like I do the effect is actually really nice because you have the shorter on top which is going to be a little darker and then underneath it gets lighter so then it kind of um, welds together like that so after I got the um, bleach to the stage that I wanted to where I had the bright banana yellow it was very light um, it was kind of getting a little stringy I could tell that my hair texture was changing so I said you know what I'm gonna cut it off here and hopefully let the toner do the rest and toning um, bleached hair does wonders like it can actually change the whole look of your blonde um, I've seen some where it takes a golden blonde to a ashy blonde to a oatmeal blonde like you can change what your blonde is so that being said I chose to use the color charm well up permanent hair or liquid toner um, this one is in t10 which is pale blonde I know that there is a white blonde and I think that's like t18 or there's a lightest ash blonde um, but I didn't want to go too ash I wanted to just go to a pale blonde and see how this worked first if this didn't give me the results that I wanted I probably would have gone to the t18 which was the lightest ash blonde and that helps get rid of um, brassiness so if you're super brassy and you don't want any brassiness at all then I would go with the t18 um, but the play up the pale blonde worked great for me because I kind of gives me like an oatmeal color 
that um, is a mixture of both. Uh, it brings you to the ash and also brings you to like the white kind of silver color, I guess, if that makes any sense. Now, I still have, have half of this bottle left. So since I was just doing the ombre on the bottom, I didn't have to use the whole bottle. So directions on the box, it says pre-lighten the hair to the required level before applying toner, which I did. I did pre-lighten. It, it says mix one part Wella Color Charm Toning Color with two parts of 20 volume. So I took the, this is, says 30, but I had a 20 volume, mixed it in my mixing bowl again. Um, at this, I also forgot to mention you can wear gloves, wear gloves so that you don't stain your hands or dry out your cuticles or anything like that. And just throw on, I threw on a trash bag as you saw in the photos, just cut a hole through the top and plop that on and I was good to go. Um, the toner is going to be very liquidy. It's not going to be like the bleach or hair dye where it's much thicker, especially if you have a cream hair dye. Um, so you just stroke that in your hair and you leave that in for... Uh, it says up to, it says apply to towel dried hair and develop for up to 30 minutes. Now, if you are um, already really, really, really pale blonde, then you have to make sure you watch it. Either it'll turn it, ex it'll turn it extremely violet, depending on which toner you have. It'll actually put lavender hues into your light blonde hair, so it'll end up looking purple, or it'll make it turn really ashy and look really green or gray. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want to, unless you're looking for that lavender green or gray look, I don't think you you should leave it in for as the recommended time. So just keep an eye on it. Um, you can wrap it up in a towel, or not a towel, but like wrap it up in a plastic bag, or just, I just left it laying on top and I just kept checking it and moving it around and trying to see the desired color that I wanted. So at that point, you rinse it out and you'll have beautifully toned blonde hair. Now, after you tone it, I put the brown back in. So I picked up a dye from Sally's and then also picked up the de required developer. Um, you can use 10 or 20, probably since your hair is already light and you're putting brown back into it, you probably just want to use a 10 developer and then I just stroke that back into the blonde parts and I just brought it down ever so slightly where I had wanted it to fade into. So it's almost like you're painting or, you know, just taking the time to stroke the color back into your hair and that's how you get the results you want to make it look natural. Um, if you just slapped it on with your hands, it's not really going to work. So that's why I feel like the brush is really important. Um, so after all that, I washed that out, got the desired look I wanted and realized that my hair needed a trimming. So more than likely you'll want to trim your hair after, um, and then use products to help prolong the health of your hair and the color. So I was, with any type of blonde hair, even if you have natural blonde hair, I think it's really important to use a um, purple shampoo or a toning shampoo. So what it is, it's, I can, oh, oh man. You know when the shower collects water? That's exactly what happened. It smells nice. Um, hopefully I can get it out just a little. Can you see? All right, so there it is. It's quite dark purple shampoo and conditioner they recommend washing your hair like either once a week or every other day um or every other time excuse me you don't i mean unless you wash your hair every other day i don't but um every other time to use a purple shampoo to kind of get to tone it periodically so you don't have to permanently tone all the time. You may want to do this again if you don't get the desired look, but in the meantime, when you shampoo, uh, purple shampoo, and this one's uh, Sally Brand Ion, which I like. It's just as dark and the same results as Shimmer Lights, and I feel like Shimmer Lights is a little bit more expensive. Um, and then I realized that wasn't, the conditioner wasn't doing as much conditioning as I would have liked, so it's important to uh, keep a hydrating mask around. I picked up the Argan Only Argan uh, mask, which I really like. The Macadamia Nut um, or Macadamia Oil brand is really good as well. 
and I've also tried the Moroccan oil, which I like too. Um, so to up the conditioning factor, I, I was shopping around and I found this brand called Vichy. They have really good skincare and I saw that they have a nourishing reparative shampoo and conditioner. And it was geared towards dry, brittle hair and it's supposed to condition it and, you know, put protein back in your hair, which is really important. When you bleach your hair, it's important to get anything with a keratin or any type of protein-based shampoo, mask, whatever, that you have to deposit that protein back into your hair to get it healthy again. And I've been using this combination and it's been really nice. And my hair has, have, it hasn't felt so limp. It's been feeling a little fuller and um, just healthier, which is great. Um, so those are the products that I used. That was the process that I did. Hopefully I've given you some good tips and tricks. Now, um, this was mainly geared towards ombre, but if you want to bleach all the way to the top or just half bleach the top and keep dark underneath or however, whatever you want to do, it's important to work on the bottom first and then work your way up because your roots are brand new, fresh hair. So that is going to develop much quicker than the bottom of your hair. So once you've gone to your root, and I really like this developer, the Ion Sensitive Scalp. Um, it smells really nice. It has a kind of um, green apple smell. It's supposed to be really conditioning, and it says it's for um, sensitive scalp. So I haven't used it to my scalp, so I can't say how great it is, but from what I've researched, um, it's one of the nicest developers out there. Um, and it's quite gentle and it smells nice. So just to recap, make sure that you read the directions on each product that you mix with the developer. So for the bleach, for the hair dye, for the toner, and it'll tell you how many parts of developer to mix with how many scoops or how many tubes or how many whatever packets of bleach. And there's also a measuring cup. So what I always do is I put the liquid First, I put the developer in first, measure that, and then I either measure on the side in a glass measuring cup or if it's just the packet, put the packet of powder in there and I stir. You can also use a whisk, but I found that this brush was stiff enough that it mixed fine for the bleach. Um, and for the liquid dye, I put the developer in first and then I put the tube in and then I also mix that as well. I'm not sure if I meant or addressed that earlier, so I just want to make sure that that was addressed. Um, so yeah, that is how I bleached my hair. And I've had a lot of people say, wow, you know, it's crazy that you did that yourself. You kind of have to buckle down and realize that you're bleaching your hair and do the research and take the time to do it. And it's a fun process. It was really fun to see how it was going to turn out. And to, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, to keep it from getting brassy, I highly recommend the toner. I know with Asian hair, it is, or dark hair, even Asian hair, it is hard to get a kind of uh, nice looking blonde. Otherwise, it looks too yellow or too orange. I mean, in some lights, yes, sometimes I see it gets a little kind of golden, which is fine for me. But in majority of the time, it's quite light and quite uh, the blonde that I would like it to be. But if you don't like it after you tone it this way, condition it and then try toning it again with a different type of toner or um, you can also go with the ash uh, dye and that generally cancels out uh, a lot of the brassiness. So I hope you find this video informative and it encourages you to go out and try it for yourself. All in all, if I were to do this at a salon, I'm sure it'd be very expensive and I'm sure everyone has their own opinion on what you should do at home, what you shouldn't do at home, and there's professionals for it, yada yada. That's fine. I just wanted to show you how I did it on a do-it-yourself level and I hope that um, you guys have a lot of questions for me and I can answer them for you. So I hope to see you guys soon in my next video. Bye.
Okay, so when you're bleaching and you're doing this to yourself, like I said, you want to do your sections. And what I did was I went from one side to the other, and then one side and to the other. And then when I came to the part where I wanted to do the fading, where I apply it vertically to kind of give it that paintbrush stroke versus the flat stroke, I made sure I um, drug some up this side, and then or I, I made sure I dragged some up this side, and then I tried to match it to this side so that way it's even because it would look quite odd, especially when you have your hair all the way in the back, that um, the fading is kind of uneven. <laughs> 